All right, I'm going to do something that should hopefully, probably mess with your mind a little bit, but I think it's kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to grab the rotator matrix, and instead of putting it on the right side, I am going to place it on the left, put an asterisk there. So we implement our multiplication and run this program. And again, we have our ship. I am going to push the left button. Oh, let's push the right button. No big deal. Everything's good. Let me let me push the forward up arrow. And all of a sudden, what do you see? I'm pushing up. And which way is our ship moving? It's not moving in the direction. It's pointing. It's moving to the left. Okay, let me do another example that might clarify a little bit better what's going on. I'm going to push up and then now I am going to push right and now let's push left and hopefully well it's gone now but hopefully maybe it might make sense what's going on here pause the video work it out on paper work some matrices and some vectors on paper and and think why does swapping these two matrices change the behavior of our program as such again I'm I'm going to actually let's let's turn it upside down here and I'm going to, going to push up and now it's going backwards and push right push left that's just weird is it not okay pause the video see if you can figure it out and then come back and we'll talk about it okay did you figure it out I hope you did or even if you didn't that's that's useful for your mind there. Now I, I could pull out my ink drawing program and work a lot, bunch of math with you, but I think at this point hopefully you understand why the transformations work the way they do, so, so on and so forth. And instead we are going to use this tool that I've built to help us further understand what's going on here. In fact, let me get as much of it in your screen area as possible. Okay, Pretty straightforward. Uh, let me explain what's going on. This matrix is an aggregation of all the matrices before it. Right now, there's only one matrix before it. So it's this matrix by itself is this matrix. All right, and then we have several functions up here. We talked about rotate. We've talked about translate. We've also talked about scale. All right, and whatever we do, I can grab these sliders and change the values, and the values will show up here and they will build the appropriate matrix here and then the program aggregates all the matrices before it. There are no other matrices here but I can add them for sure. So now we have four matrices. In the case of our program we only had two matrices so I'll go back to two but I can add these four in, multiply them all together and then it gives us this last matrix on the right and then my program takes this matrix and applies it to our house. Okay, so actually uh, let me let me restart this program and only do two matrices. Close that. Bring this back in. Get it into view where you can see it. And add a transform. And then the yellow matrix is the matrix that is affected by me grabbing these sliders, you'll see. So anyway, okay, let's, uh, let's keep this simple. First of all, to prove that this works, I'm going to Scale on the X. We've talked about scaling on the X. I can scale on the Y. All right, and hopefully it makes sense why the values in this matrix are changing the way they are. I can highlight here again the basis vectors, if that helps. Okay, and this is the original Y basis value. So as I scale on the Y larger, we stretch our house, and I can shrink it and make it short and fat. Okay, uh, let me bring these back to where I had them. I think scale of one, which means it's original size, so to say. Uh, the rotate, nothing new here. Let me grab this slider, and we're seeing the cosine sine, negative sine, cosine, and I can rotate like such. Okay, and then the translate, remember which section of the matrix makes up the translation? Well, this is the translate x and the translate y. This is that third vector that we can't see but we use to do our translation. So translate x, translate y, so on and so forth. Okay, let's put these back to uh, zero, if I can get them there. Zero, 
Zero. Okay, good. So going back to our ship, remember we we first had the when when it was working properly, we had the rotation matrix on the right and the translation matrix on the left. And then what I did, the thing that did not work was to put the rotation matrix on the left and the translation matrix on the right. So using this program, I'm going to attempt to demonstrate why the results were the way they were. Remember, if I can draw it here, uh, the origin is roughly about here, and there's a vector comes out here. And a oh, that wasn't pretty at all, was it? There's a another vector comes out <laughs> here. That wasn't even. Well, let's use my hack here and click. There we go. Another vector here, and I can't do this because that's in the way. Oh, so sorry. There's another vector here. And then there's another vector here. And again, we're looking at it as vertices. When the vectors aren't present, you can look at them as vertices or points. But in the book of Jamie King, I'm sure that maybe that's somewhere in some graphics Bible, uh, you'll see that they're all vectors. Anyway, so we're applying these matrices to the vectors. Now what happens if I hit those vectors? Well, let's just take this vector, first of all. One by one, we're applying this aggregation uh, to that single vector right here. In fact, let me just do it in green. This vector here. And so that three-component vector, I can't even remember what its value is. It might be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 1. Um, once we've multiplied these matrices together and we get our aggregation of it, we apply that aggregation to this vector. But that's the same as just saying, well, let's let's apply apply these to this vector. So I'm going to draw that right there instead. Uh, remember, we're we're hitting this vector with this matrix first, and then this matrix second. Notice the order that these matrices will basically apply to this vector. This guy is closer to the vector, so he will apply first to the vector. Then this guy is second in line, and he will apply second to the vector. And that's important. Right? If, if you remember, if you know matrices at all, uh, if we had a matrix M, and we multiply that with a matrix T, that is not always, and generally is never equal to, but, but in some cases it is, uh, equal to T and M. Okay, we cannot swap the order of the inputs. That's important. All right, and and yet that's what we did when I put the rotate on the left instead of the right. So the first thing we want to do is hit this the ship or this house. We'll call it a house. We want to hit it with the rotation first. We want it to rotate around its origin here. So let me click on this matrix and let's just say we're going to turn our ship this direction. Okay, and then after we're done with that, we want to apply a translation. So let's translate it and translate it. And then now our, our ship, that, that's the kind of behavior we're expected to. Let's rotate it around its origin and then translate it. All right, well, now let's swap the order that we just did those things in. Translate, let's take all this back to zero and take this uh, back to zero as well. And now I'm going to make this the rotation matrix and this the translation matrix but let's do it in the order that they'll hit the vector okay so let's touch this matrix first and uh, let's translate it a little bit in the X translate it a little bit in the Y but now notice the ship is all the way over here but the origin is still here okay this is still the middle right when we apply a rotation we're rotating around the origin remember and I was very picky about this that now our resulting vectors or something to this effect coming off the origin. And so when I hit those vectors with a the rotation, they are going to rotate around the origin. The origin's not here, the origin's still here. Okay, so watch what happens when we when we say, okay, let's do the rotation now. <gasps> you see? You see that? It's rotating around the coordinate space origin there. It's not rotating around its origin. So it's the, the order that we apply these operations is important. 
uh, generally we rotate first and then we translate. Okay, and then if we want to do a scaling, well, we can do a scaling as well. Let me let me bring these uh, back to where they should be, right there and right there. And say we want to rotate, scale, and translate. Well, let me. We're going to need three matrices to do that. So, what should we do first? Well, we know we should at least do the rotation first. But could we do the scaling first? That's a good little homework assignment for you. Pause the video and think. Hmm, could we scale it? and then rotate it, or rotate it, and then scale it, would that make a difference? Um, and then if the translate, can we mix the translate with the scaling and rotation? Pause the video, think about that. Okay, let's let's try doing this. I'm gonna, I, I want this thing to be a little bit smaller. I think it's too big, so let's go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we've scaled uniformly. Okay, we've shrunk our house. The origin is still here, roughly, in the center of it. And then let's let's do the rotation here. Rotate, rotate. That's nice. Okay, the scaling didn't affect how we're rotating here because the scaling, since we did a uniform scaling, the origin stayed in the center. Okay, not until we do the translation. And remember, translation is kind of the, for lack of a better term, it's kind of the bastard child we had to jimmy rig into the system by doing this three-dimensional thing in 2D. All right, so let me grab the translation and. Yeah, we can translate now. So notice we've scaled and we've translated and we're good to go. And again, all these matrices are being multiplied and the result is here. And this is what my program actually applies to the individual uh, vectors coming off the origin there. So there you go. Order of operations is definitely important with, with matrices. I really like this program. It helped me get my hands on this. And I encourage you to build something similar to this. It would definitely solidify some concepts in your head to be able to touch this and move things around.